So I have a really weird uh, question slash request. We spoke with somebody last Monday about picking the apricots and they gave us the green light. Uh, we're gonna pick those today, so I just wanted to give you a call and let you know so that if anybody calls or is concerned or anything like that, you kind of have a heads up. Okay, and I'll give you a ring when we're done, that way you guys know we're out of it. All right, thanks for the help, appreciate it. <laughs> We're picking apricots today, guys. For three years in a row, we've been fortunate enough to be able to pick from this grand apricot tree. And last year, the owners of the tree didn't really want people picking from it because it was a liability issue. None of the fruit is really accessible from the ground, so, and the tree was a nuisance to them because it was dropping apricots everywhere. And if you've ever had a fruit tree, fruit dropping on the ground isn't necessarily a good thing if you're not gonna get to it in time because it makes a mess out of your walking area and your cars. So what we offered to do, since we had a forklift at the time, was pick the entire tree with the forklift because it was much safer than going up in a tree in ladders. And they said, that sounds awesome, only if you pick the entire tree so that you make our life better and we don't have to deal with any of the falling fruit. We're gonna drive the forklift into town. It takes a while, forklifts aren't the speediest of all animals. We have another family that's gonna join us in the festivities and we're gonna see how many apricots we can get. Last year, we got 40 gallons of apricots. And the crazy thing is we weren't able to give it all away. I mean, we canned probably 20 gallons ourselves and we gave five gallon buckets to certain friends, but we ended up throwing a few gallons away because when you give people fruit, it's kinda like giving someone a cleaning tool. You have to do work. You don't just get to enjoy the fruit as is. We're supposed to have some incredibly hot weather today, but somehow we lucked out. We woke up and there's this really nice cloud covering. So we're hoping, we're really hoping it's gonna stay because we're not able to get an early start, which means we're gonna be picking in the middle of the day. Looking. Ready to load up. Cool. Did you show them the two apricots that we have from the tree? No. Do you want me real quick? Well, yeah, I think the green one. Here, I'll show them. I think it's working. So this one we picked probably what four, four or five days ago, maybe. Yep. It's it's like close to ripe. Yeah. I mean, one it's not one side ripe. of the tree they look orange, like ripe, yeah. and then the other side was kind of green. So we were a little yep. worried. But our research concludes that apricots will continue to ripen off the tree. Yep. So long as there is a little color. Well, this one didn't have any color when we picked it. Remember, it, it was didn't? it was like that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and so it's it's coming into color. Well, I'm curious to taste it. I think I think we're good. The owners of the tree want us to pick a tree like ASAP. So I yep. think we're gonna take our chances. You stopped by mm -hmm. the tree yesterday, and it seems stuff's good. dropping. So it's ready. Yep. It's ready. so it would fit in the back of the truck, right? Right. Like you didn't just wing it and it happens to fit. That was part of the design. Yeah, I wanted to make sure we could take it and the truck and the Because last time we had to tow it. We had to yep. tow the baskets Wings down. Fit. Yep. Don't you smile every time you look at the flag? 
Does it make you a little happier? <laughs> so to me, that's oh, the value of taking that extra 1% in your work is that when you're working, every time you look at your little your little piece of artwork, you get happy inside. When it turns out good. Right. <laughs> when it's a failure, you're like, eh. It totally yeah. could have failed. This is one of those that we got a little bit lucky on, I'll admit it. <laughs> Been a while. Great. <laughs> Your chafe mark has gone away yet from the last two, time? Nope. Still have a perma wedgie. That could be good for bad apricots. That way we don't waste perfectly good buckets. Yeah, uh, there's a little traffic. Um, you can see that this oh, tree is ready. Dropping, yeah. It's dropping like crazy, so I think we might even be a day late. Ready, Freddy? Yeah. Wait, you did this last year, so I know. a little bit of roll It took swap. me four hours. <laughs> yes. We have officially destroyed the foraging gremlin. You just picked 40 gallons of huck, or of, of apricots. I'm gonna go count right now, okay? It's hot outside. Don't, don't move, okay? I feel so dehydrated. Don't move. Okay. Okay, I'll be right back. Yeah. <sighs> gonna need a couple coffee deliveries. We should start a timer. A timer? <laughs> I know, right? Well, it's not fair because the tree's not as full this year, so. I know, it looks way less full. Well, it's really full in the front, but the back side's not as full. We'll see. It'll still be worthwhile, It's gonna be I worth think. it, yeah. See, I kind of start us on the outside, and then we'll have you move and move us to the inside. Sounds good. Oh, yeah. Oh, these are so ripe, so definitely be careful, like, picking, because if you jerk that branch, it's all gonna come off. Yeah, they're, they're like, day or two from, like, all falling off the tree. Good timing. We've had a challenge picking fruit, and, and that's when we use our five-gallon buckets. They're so deep. And I guess we're not super gentle when we put them in there, but the fruit on the bottom ends up being bruised and pretty much unusable. So we had our friends call around and they were able to get these from our local supermarket. They're just fruit boxes. They're a little less deep than the five gallon buckets and then they also have holes in them which allow the fruit to breathe. This might be a better way to store our fruit rather than what we were doing before. So we're really curious to see how this works today. You ready to move already? We're two extremely speedy pickers. I might as well leave the forklift on. <laughs> right, almost. Um, yeah, we're ready to move up. Okay. Ah, man, this one's getting me. Oh yeah, these are falling off the tree for sure. Oh wow. Super right. Well, it's definitely not as many as last year, but so far we're actually doing really well. I think we're probably over four gallons and we've just got started. There's probably gonna be a lot of booming around and up and down and we're getting better at this process, but it's not, it's not really what this machine is designed for, but we're doing good, we're not hurting the tree and uh, we're getting a lot of fruit. So I think we gotta just boom up, down around and keep picking our brains out. Ready to move. Oh, there you are. Slow. 
Boxes or gallons do you think we have? I think we're at 20 gallons of ripish apricots already, and I think there's probably five that aren't that's, ripe. That's pretty good. 25? Not, not as many as last year, but no. it's, it's nothing to shake a stick at. This is, that's better than I thought. I mean, looking at it, I was like, I don't know. And then we started picking, I was like, boy, I, I really good. don't know. Yeah, that's probably, I mean, those are probably, that's probably 20 gallons. Are you keeping it shallow just to not? Yep. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's the mother load spot of green apricots. How's the forklift drive? This is actually easier than the other one. Really? How so? Uh, I don't know. It's just smoother. More, more. I don't know. Yeah, it's more. It's more smooth. I definitely think we should get a better angleometer thing, Majigger, on there. When, um, when you're using it, you can't see anything. Once you kind of know what you're looking for, you can, but it's the other one that was on the other machine was way better. I also and, feel like putting that graph somewhere you can see it so you know, like... It's right here. Okay. But, yeah, you, you kind of have to get, like, kind of like with the crane, you kind of set your angle, and you that's when you work. So, like, if he wants me to boom down, but I'm set at my angle, I'd rather drive in and then boom out versus, like, booming down and out. Right. So that way you know you're working in the same part of the table. Um, we're so far under under the rating of this forklift, yeah. but we're also like, you know, outside of the load center, so we're yeah. kind of like test pilots here. But so far, I mean, it's been perfect. And I like the glass, except oh, for yeah. it feels like a fishbowl in here. Yeah. Like, I feel like I got a really bad Yeah, sunburn. we lost our cloud coverage. Yeah. I got a fan, though. We See? had to move to the shade. Look at my office. I got oh, a fan nice. in here. <laughs> Don't okay. tell Matt. He'll think, I know. He'll think I'm like, you know, drinking ice water in here. You're a slave driver down here. Drinking lattes and watching him work. <laughs> Moved all the way around the canopy. We kind of did like the lower part with two people. And then we did one person in the canopy. And then we're just doing one last lap to get all the green yep. stuff. We don't know if the green stuff's even going to ripen. We'll we don't see. Know. We'll keep it separate in case it doesn't. Is this satisfying? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there then I'll move you over here and then there was like three way up in that hole okay so I'll boom you out you can get one viewer right there there's like oh yeah there's a couple of them. yeah 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 We don't know if they'll ripen. We hope they will. I think they will. There's, yeah, maybe slower. I mean, there's none that are solid green, so. Yeah, interestingly, the lower canopy was all this way, so why not pick it all together? Yeah, nice work. Yeah. So we got one, two, three, four, five, five and a half boxes. Not bad of a haul. That's more than I thought we would get. It's probably about 20 gallons. With all the people watching, we all probably consumed a box, so. Do 
we have any more? That's it. Sweet. It's pretty good haul. Not Don't bad. crash on the way home. Yeah. I mean, that's just picked that. Yep, we better heck? get to these. We just picked it. How can it, like, how's that even possible? It makes no sense. It's so, con but they're ripening we for had sure. We a couple of very young helpers that may have put. Oh, mingled some stuff. <laughs> may have co mingled. Oh, this might be the mingle box. That, that makes sense. Otherwise, this is confusing as heck or frustrating and both. freaking mess. It's an apricot massacre. Wow. This is the one fruit that is a legit mess. So two, three years ago, we tried to juice apricots <laughs> in the juicer. Oh my gosh. We don't have the best juicer in the world, but no. it just clogged and backed up and made a huge mess all over the cabin. Looks like we're going to get maybe around eight gallons yeah. of finished apricots. It's about two gallons per box and that's pitted. And it looks like there's about a gallon of pits there. So it looks like a, a box is probably around two and a half gallons of apricots. Last year we got 40, 40 gallons, not pitted. Not pitted. So it looks like when you pit them, you're losing about a half a gallon um, for two gallons. So that's good to know. We should write that somewhere in one of our books. Yep. The point we really want to share that we share in, oh, pretty much every video is how much fruit is available. Um, it probably does depend where you're at, but in our rural community, there's so much fruit and everyone tells us, what is this thing? The best time to plant a fruit tree is yesterday. The second best time is today. Why haven't you planted fruit trees yet? Right. And the truth is that, well, we're still doing a lot of construction on our property. So we're not sure where we want our fruit trees. We're not ready to invest that time into growing them. And why would we grow? Why would we worry about growing our own fruit trees right now? We have a million other things to worry about when there's so much fruit available. So far, when we ask people kindly if we can pick their fruit trees, we have a hundred percent yes rate. Success rate. Yes. Success rate. But we're not asking just any way. We're not going up to people with like this beautifully groomed orchard that's well maintained. We're finding fruit trees that it looks like no one's picking from and maybe some of the fruit has even started to fall. And at that point we feel that the fruit is going to go to waste. And so far when we ask people, hey, if you're, are you going to pick your fruit? If, if they say no, do you mind if we do? They're like, yes, please. Because again, fruit dropping makes a mess yep. and people are really ecstatic if you're willing to bring them some pints of whatever you can because they weren't going to do it anyways. It's a win, win, win. That's one win, of our win. secrets is to, is to take some food and provide something in return to the, to the owner. Sure. Maybe they don't have a lot of work invested in it necessarily, but when you can access a resource like this, like the apricot tree, I think was probably somewhere around like 60 years old, 40, 50 to 60 years old. Not young. So we're benefiting from whoever planted that tree and it's nothing for us to share a small percentage of the harvest. We did that from the very first tree we ever picked and the owner said, wow, I never expected somebody to actually bring some fruit back because it's so common that people just wanna take and not give. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, what on earth would I do with 40 or even 10 gallons of apricots? What we're trying to convey here is that it's not about 
you consuming all this stuff yourself. This is something that we've done since we got here is we've taken whatever resource we have, whatever it is, and usually it's food, and we create something of value out of that. And then we use it to, first of all, show generosity. We live in an area where people just give to each other. But then we've turned around and we've used it to get access to things that we don't otherwise have. For example, we brew our own wine. This is called mead or honey wine. And we're able to use this as a gift. And oddly enough, a lot of people don't do home brewing. And so they enjoy when we're able to give them something that's both homemade and it's something that's rare. We've done the same thing with a lot of the garden produce. We don't just grow a garden so we can stuff our faces with it, but instead we create things that are valuable, things that other people maybe don't make or that maybe they don't know how to make or they don't have access to. And so while we enjoy them, such as like salsa verde or garlic scapes or things like that, this also allows us to show generosity to people, and in turn, they reciprocate by giving us things that maybe we don't have access to. For example, meat. We haven't had time to hunt, we've been too busy, and we're hoping to get to do that this year. It might not happen. So instead, what we do is focus on doing what we're already gonna do, but do a little bit more. We have found that the labor difference between 10 gallons of apricots and 20 gallons of apricots is really not that big of a deal. If you're already at it, it's just a little bit more work versus trying to take on something new. And this has worked extremely well for us. That's why we're confident that if somebody else were to try this in their community, to go around, find a resource that people are either walking right by or they're not using, put the work into it, make something of value that people would want, and then use that to try to access things that you need, but maybe you don't have time to make or that you can't get. It's worth mentioning that part of our debt-free strategy with this lifestyle has been this. We take something that people maybe just walk past or just really aren't interested in, and the reason they're not interested in it is because it's work. Everyone knows that getting the fruit is work, but then turning it into something is a lot of work. We have fun going to the store and figuring out what this type of stuff would cost if you were to purchase it. Even jam is something that if you buy a high quality jam, something that's not full of corn syrup or high fructose corn syrup, is actually quite expensive. And so when we create this stuff, we can earn two to $300 a day in equivalent value. We can't be taxed on our labor and we don't have to go to work to earn that money. So we're able to create things of value with our time and effort. So maybe the fruit, maybe it's worth $3 a pound. But when you start to create something of value, this stuff increases. It's worth quite a bit more. So by adding value to the things that we can get for free, this is one of the ways we've been able to reduce our purchasing of groceries. And this isn't about trying to get a low grocery bill. This is high quality food. This is the stuff that if you bought at the store, your grocery bill might be 600 to $1,000 a month. So what's the plan this year? Well, we're thinking we're gonna turn all of this into apricot salsa, except eight cups, which we're probably gonna do a gallon of apricot mead. Yeah, so our apricot salsa pretty much vanished, am I right? Yes. That stuff was like gold. And we're thinking that because apricot jam is good, but so many fruits, you can't make salsa or anything else out of other than jam. Yep. So that's why apricot salsa it is. This probably looks like apple juice, but it's actually apricot mead. And so far, everyone has agreed it's amazing. This is the one fruit that just has tremendous amounts of pulp. And I'm actually really happy with how this clarified, but if you look really close, there's still just the teeniest, teeniest little bit of pulp at the bottom. So maybe this year when we make this, we can get it 100% clear. But overall, I'm pretty excited at how that turned out compared with how it started.